unstoppable record break. Tangerine Dream, one of the most mind-shattering rock bands I've heard in years. The bass neared subsonics, felt rather than heard. Chairs, walls, skulls, all hummed in sympathy. Here was real stun guitar, riffs of pure vicious energy, bursting like a machine gun and gliding like an organ. That was National Rockstar, reviewing just one concert in Tangerine Dream's recent sellout British tour. Their new album, Stratosphere, captures all that excitement. We suggest you capture Stratosphere. It's in the shops now. Rare Bird from the new Tangerine Dream 12-inch single. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Jeanette asked Edgar about Peter Bauman's decision to leave the band and the arrival of Steve Joliffe and Klaus Kruger for the Cyclone album and subsequent tour. The problem simply was that we could not, for some reason, agree to some decisions Peter Bauman made in 77 and um, it was shortly after the second part of the American tour and he wanted to live in New York and um, as any wanted to do that and wanted to do that and he had a certain type of lifestyle which is totally the opposite of our ones which is okay we didn't respect that and we were together for about six years and so a lot of things went fine some others didn't but uh, when we split it there was a recording session announced there was a release date of a record there was uh, a tour planned, so um, there were no, uh, not so many choices to go with, you know. And I didn't know Steve from uh, 66, 67, 68, you know, sometimes around these periods. And uh, so I, I know that he, is, that he is a very fine musician and a fine character. So I thought, let, let's call him, let's get him into the band. He plays keyboard as well. Shouldn't be any problem. Was a good musician, you can improvise right away. And um, Chris didn't know where uh, Klaus, and uh, so he brought them into the band and said, okay, let's have a rehearsal session for a couple of, couple of months. Okay, once again, the truth. The thing was, when we produced Cyclone, uh, I never said that before, but anyway, it's we made all the all the ground tracks, which we didn't want to make. We wanted to make a piece of music the same way like we did before, you know, sit down, improvise. But because we did not know so well each other, you know, uh, we just had basic tracks all the time. You know, we could do whatever we like. We we always were running into basic tracks, basic tracks. Everybody said, okay, that's tracks. I mean, it's, it's, it's like somebody wants to sing on it. And we said, no, it's not possible. I mean, crazy. We never use words. <laughs> but because of that uh, pressure we had from all angles, you know, then um, one one day I remember Steve uh, came into the studio and said, look, uh, I wrote some lyrics. I don't know if uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I mean, try it, but we... So, uh, sorry, we definitely don't use it, but try it. And, you know, it was a very delicate situation, and he did, and he tried, and and at least it was a mixture of uh, being suppressed by time factors and um, not knowing what to do, where to go, you know. And so, in the end, it turned out to be halfway what we wanted. But the Cyclone record, it's, it's still one of those uh, pieces of music where we are still totally unsure about. It's an exception yeah. and... Uh, totally exception. There are a lot of people which only like one album of Tangerine Dream, <laughs> it's Cyclone. Yeah, I mean, it's an uh, experiment, which was a half failure, but it was an experiment, and we are not tried doing experiments, and it was maybe as such as... Um, Paul McCartney maybe would do the experiments doing a song without vocals. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette started the proceedings by asking how the original members of the band first got together. Terribly. Terribly. <laughs> the thing was that the whole um, recording session, I mean it was a recording session, it wasn't planned to release the first record at all. It was a, uh, a Sunday afternoon when we came together on a, on a small studio in Berlin and uh, we just were sitting together and playing around a bit and someone did tape it. And uh, a couple of months later, we already had forgotten about the session, about the tape and everything. And we got a letter from, um, from a German record company saying, uh, 
oh, we are very interested in a very unusual kind of music. We want to release it. And we couldn't stop laughing about it because we said, <laughs> what an idiot. We want to release such a, such a record, you know. Because, uh, as you must know, at uh, those days, Germany had no um, music identity at all, really. And so we were not prepared to copy American music, to copy English music. So we tried to do something on our own, you know. And what we did was just rehearsing. I mean, we just tried to figure out which way to go. And uh, that first uh, experiment, call it an experiment, uh, should be released on a record. I mean, it was very fascinating. That's all about that. <laughs>